Good evening. My name is Steve. Welcome to Christianity Out Loud's Weekly Word. Been a little while, but that's okay. Been busy. Busy at work. Actual work. So, this week, I wish to propose a question. And that is, what is the role of government? Now, aside from the obvious answer, and aside from the obvious biblical answer, I want to propose that question. What is the role of government? No surprise, I'll be looking down south from here in Brisbane to my friends in Victoria and their current Labor government. As pointed out on the Aussie Wire last week, I think it was by Topher Field, that Victoria is essentially a one-party state, thanks in large part to the Victorian Liberal National Party's absolute ineffectiveness, fecklessness, weakness, and that has been seen by their dismissal of more redeeming an actual woman who stood up for women's rights, believe it or not. The Conservative Party here in Australia who doesn't believe that women should stand up for women's rights. But I digress. What is the role of government? Now, the I would say the, not the socialist in me, that's the wrong word, but the person who believes in I guess big but limited government would probably be the best way I stand would be yes infrastructure public infrastructure yes I think government should build roads uh, we all pay here in Australia at least significant taxations and make contributions to those sorts of public infrastructure uh, projects so I do believe it is whichever strand local state or federal uh, their purview to look after something like a road or a bridge or a footpath or something like that. I think that's fair and reasonable. If we contribute taxation money, that money should then be allocated and used wisely, yes, but go towards such projects. Uh, I also do believe that you know, big but limited government should fund education. Um, currently, we don't have a thriving public education system. Pardon the dogs barking next door. Uh, a thriving education system, uh, a public education system, in the sense that it is it is well biased and well activist oriented, uh, rather than necessarily simply well funded. By well funded, I mean resources. You know, here in Queensland, at least until recently, there was still asbestos in uh, some uh, classrooms. And yeah, really, we've known asbestos is bad for some time now. That should have been removed, really, by now. May all have been. I'm talking in the last at least 10 years, there was still asbestos here in Queensland classrooms. I do believe that you know, big but limited government should fund health. You know, we shouldn't have waiting lists at hospitals and those sorts of things. And ambulances shouldn't have long ramp times as they seem to here in Queensland and actually in Victoria since we're on the topic of Victoria. And law enforcement, I believe. So police should be well funded and well paid for. And I believe they should be an arm of the state government, they should be there to enforce the laws that are on the books. And by laws, I don't mean silly things like mask mandates and all of that rubbish. Actual laws. Don't go and kill someone. If you murder somebody, then there shall be an investigation. Law enforcement shall find you, etc., etc. And I also believe that they should be having at least the equivalent you know, in weaponry that can be found on the streets, not just, you know, pistols and those sorts of things, so decent body armour, etc. If we go to a federal level, then yes, I think government should fund federal infrastructure 
that should ensure that our borders are nice and secure. They should ensure that our defence forces or defence services, depending on which terminology you wish to use, are well funded, well resourced, and we've managed to balls that up here in Australia across the last few years as well. So, doing a bang up job here. But really that, to me, big but limited, big meaning, okay, there may be a reasonably extensive budget, if you like, one that we as the taxpayer are contributing to, but limited or, or, or still on big, there are big projects and big departments not necessarily lots of departments, but the departments that exist may be large in nature, like defence, for example. But limited in the sense that that is the job of government. That is it. Government should not tell you that your business is non-essential. Yes, I'm still holding on to 2020 and all of those lockdowns. Which and border closures, which were unconstitutional and should have been struck down by the High Court of Australia, who proved themselves to be utterly weak and feckless as well. So focusing on Victoria for the moment, because no state here seems to be quite as mad as Daniel Andrews. Now, if you've followed the news here in Australia, or if you're not from Australia and you're sort of playing along casually at home. I realise that our governments like to think we are big players uh, on the world stage. I at least have enough humility to realise that a country of 25 million people in the middle of the Pacific Ocean probably isn't a huge player on the world stage. But nonetheless, it is important for us here. So if you are watching from overseas, this is for amusements sake or interest's sake if uh, if for no other reason you would have known by now at least if you follow on with what i talk about here that uh, daniel andrews has done some things really in the last three years he was the he was the premier that oversaw the harshest lockdowns here in australia the most strict mandates okay and the melbourne Central Business District is still yet to recover from that. I spoke to somebody the other day, anecdotal, I realise. They said they'd spent some time in Melbourne and that the CBD, Central Business District, which is usually where all of everything, all of the activity happens, was just dead. So, digressing just a little bit. You would also be aware that the Liberal National Party here in, well, down in uh, Victoria, is about as useless as a glass eye at a, at a at a um, at a door glass eye at a uh, door viewing hole. The name of it has just rapidly escaped me. You know what I mean? Useless, worthless, pointless. Should not exist. May as well not exist. Uh, and they've just expelled my redeeming um, for supporting women's rights. So there you go. Shows how. Utterly useless they are. But in true Daniel Andrews fashion, this women's rights event occurs. And of course, it's um, promoted by our media, our wonderful media here in Australia, as an anti-trans, not a pro-women. Of course, there's that lovely play on language that we have <coughs> so often in our modern culture. Thank you very much, Foucault and the postmodern movements. Uh, Labour and anti-trans movement. So, of course, Daniel Andrews, in all of his wisdom, decides to fly the trans flag over the Victorian Parliament House. Then there was a series of... Pardon my squeaky chair. There was a series of drag queen story hours because here in Australia we can't escape that absolute mad debauchery that is a trans, a drag queen rather, story hour. And they were cancelled because some fine folk 
took exception to children being exposed to adult entertainment. Shock, horror, what a controversial view to hold in 2023. Nonetheless, they did. So those events were cancelled out of fear of violence and retribution and all that rubbish. I've addressed that. I don't condone violence, but you know what? You want to dress up like a clown, put on makeup, fake tits and a dress and read to my child, you will have me to deal with. So, I can certainly understand the sentiment. But what does Daniel Andrews do? Well, in good old Daniel Andrews fashion, he decides to host. He, the Victorian Parliament under the Labour Party, decides to host Drag Queen Story Hour rather than these private cafes, libraries, businesses, etc. He decides to go the whole hog and host Drag Queen Story Hours. That really made me think, what is actually the role of government? And then to top it all off, tick it all off, I read an article today, news.com.au. Uh, surprisingly, it was actually a critique. COVID debt headline. COVID debt, as always, link will be below. I'll now read you the headline, I promise, without interruption. COVID debt levies to raise $8.6 B for billion dollars by 2027. As radio host, don't know who, blasts Daniel Andrews over budget cons. First sentence, Victorians will be hit with new COVID levies to help ease the state's massive debt under Daniel Andrews' latest budget. Carrying on, Victorians will be hit with a decade of COVID tax pain to help ease the state's massive debt under Daniel Andrews' latest budget. As I posted that article on several of my socials, go follow me, Getter, Minds, Gab, Facebook, Locals, go follow me. I said this, I didn't say it, I wrote it. Well, you let him lock you down, mandate, and dictate for the best part of two years. You voted him back in, and now he's taxing you into oblivion by making you pay for his policy choices that kept you locked up. Pardon the engine noises coming from next door as well. Victorian Treasurer Tim Pallas, I assume you pronounce that, P-A-L-L-A-S, Palais, don't know, said the levies would wipe off $30 billion of COVID debt over the next 10 years with the new COVID tax due to end in 2023. Just stop for a minute, moment or minute, I combined those two words, stop for a moment and just think of that number, $30 billion over 10 years. So Victorians will be paying out of their money, their money, for 10 years. On average, I take from that $3 billion, 3 times 10 is 30. I'm not much of a mathematician, but I can work that out to pay for all of the policies that Daniel Andrews implemented from 2020. So I pose to you the question, knowing that those in Victoria are going to be paying extra taxation and levies brought upon by the government's own actions, the fact that he is, or the Victorian Labor government, will more than willingly fly the trans flag over Parliament House, not the Australian or the Victorian or the Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander flag, but the trans flag. 
and that the Daniel Andrews Labor Party will more than willingly host Drag Queen Story Hours With all of that in mind, <clears throat> what is the role of government? And why the would I obey that government? See, all throughout COVID, all throughout 2020, 21, 22, I was told by the church goer, by the Christian, that all governments, all leaders are appointed by God. And I get that. I go back and I look in the Bible. Okay. There are good leaders appointed by God. There were bad leaders who were allowed to be elected by God. Saul was not the leader. <clears throat> that they wanted but he was the leader that they asked for he was not the leader that they needed rather he was the leader that they asked for so they got Saul and what did he do so I understand that God will allow certain people to be appointed to office because that is what the people have asked for. If you're a Christian in Victoria, why are you obeying this government? Throughout every step of the way, when all these Christians told me you must obey, because all governments are appointed by God, I go, you're right. Daniel didn't obey, though. How does that fit into the mix? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Abednego didn't obey. How does, where does that fit into the obedience at all costs? You can make an argument that Jesus did not obey the law of the day. You can make that argument. Was it lawful to work on the Sabbath day? No. Did Jesus heal on the Sabbath day? Yes. Did the Pharisees regard that as him working on the Sabbath day? Yes. In their eyes, did he disobey what the law was? Yes. Did he deny that he disobeyed the law? No. <clears throat> As he often did, he responded to their questioning with another question. What would you do if your sheep fell into a well? Would you not rescue it? Does that not work? So you can very easily, and I think justifiably so, make the argument that Jesus did not obey the law of the day. Now... Where do all of those things come into this idea of obedience at all costs? Particularly when the role of government, at least the role of the Daniel Andrews government, the Daniel Andrews Labor government, they see their role as promoting certain ideologies, certain lifestyles, certain agendas that only flow extremely left. They are collectivist, they are government is God, they are, we are all in this, there is no individual. What does that sound like? Sounds a damn side like communism slash Marxism to me. So what is the role of government? See, I don't know. I'm not sure. Other states haven't gone as extreme as Daniel Andrews and Labor in Victoria. I don't hold out much hope for New South Wales because the Liberal National Party in New South Wales locked every bit, locked everybody down and followed Daniel Andrews' lead. 
in that case, you're hardly conservative. And the Liberal National Party here in Queensland is absolutely dead set quiet <clears throat> unless it's the talking points, the typical political, useless, pointless, pathetic talking points. Oh, Queenslanders deserve better health care. We will fix health care. Okay. Go away until you come up with something meaningful. You absolutely useless bunch of Muppets. What's the role of government? And why on earth am I, as a Christian, who has the Bible, don't have one handy here, so point to my book for a minute there, um, who has the Bible, I have laws, I have rules that I can obey. They're written right there. They weren't ordained by government. They were ordained and put down by God. I have the Ten Commandments. That's a good starting point. That was reduced to three. Seek justice, love mercy, walk humbly with your God, depending on your translation. That was reduced to two. Love the Lord your God. Love your neighbour as yourself. I don't need... A government to tell me what to do. I have the Bible. <clears throat> See, I wonder whether my good friends, the Jehovah's Witnesses, and I say that sincerely, they turn up at my doorstep, and I don't mind. They're more than welcome. They're lovely people. They engage me in conversation. Obviously, we have fairly significant theological differences, them being non-Trinitarian, me being Trinitarian for a start, that's a significant difference. And I find that they go to whenever they're confronted with something that they can't argue back or retort from a scriptural perspective is I invite you to come along to one of my to one of our um, information sessions and that's fine they're wonderful people lovely if you're jehovah's witness turn up at my door anytime you like i'll have a coffee and talk the weather or sport with you i don't have to talk religion iron sharpens iron i love the i love the conversation i really do but they don't vote they don't vote and they don't vote because religious purposes and religious reasons i think Maybe that's one of the things they got right. Just living by what they believe the laws of the land or the laws of their religion are rather than the laws of the land and paying absolutely no attention and no credence and no credibility to what someone like Daniel Andrews does. See, I just... I fear... I fear for I fear for Australia. That's not a that's not a you know that's not an exaggerated statement. But when Christians weren't even prepared to turn around and go, well, no, no, I don't actually listen to you, and no, you're not actually the high power that I report to. And that I answer to, ultimately, the high power I answer to is God, is Jesus Christ. And I will answer to him on, on the day of judgment when I stand before him and have to account for all of my actions. He's who I answer to, not you, Daniel Andrews. Not you, Mark McGowan. Not you, Anastasia Palaszczuk. Not you, Dominic Perrottet. Nobody. So I, I re at this point in time, at this point in my life, I really don't have an answer for what is the role of government. I would love someone to help me out. As a Christian man, what am I to do with the Daniel Andrews Labor government? Aside from the evident evidentially evident, evidently futile attempts to pray for him his heart is stone so 
I don't know. I don't know. Help me out. And with that question, and with that thought, until next week, God bless.